Projects. I'm Emily. I'm Jennifer's daughter. You may have seen me in a couple other videos. But today's video, we are going to be doing guacamole. And I personally am a famous guacamole maker in my family. And so I'm going to be walking you through step by step on what to do using these new piggy. The mocajete? I still not saying that. <laughs> <laughs> How you say it? That's all I got. <laughs> but anyways, so I hope you enjoy. And it isn't necessarily a measurement. It's more going by taste. So do what you prefer. I hope you enjoy. Okay, so basically, as you saw, I sliced both of these avocados in half, and what I'm doing is I'm taking out the pit, usually after, um, but I am scooping out the insides and putting it into our little piggy. Sometimes it can be a bit tough to get the avocado in there. You gotta just be patient with it, though. <laughs> Mom prefers a spoon. Emily prefer prefers forks. the fork. I prefer forks. To me, they're superior over spoons. <laughs> Anyways, once we have these in here, we will be adding all the seasonings. Okay. So now, before we add our seasonings, we are going to be grinding these things up. I am forewarning you, I have never used one of these. The mocajete. I'm just going to call it weird little piggy <laughs> for pronunciation purposes. Are your avocados pretty hard? Yes. Yeah. They have to be slightly firm for this. All squishy like a snail. <laughs> the mocha had day was cured already, and we have a video that we'll tag uh, up above showing you how to do that process. Is there a consistency you're going for? So I'm going for more of a paste-like consistency. Like you can have some chunks in there. That's okay. You're not going to get them all. But get it pretty close to like a paste. And just put them on muscles into it. <laughs> See like these little bits right in here. You're probably going to miss a bit. Because the greener side, the greener it is, the more like soft it tends to be. So the insides are more on the firm side. And so that's why you see in like guacamole, usually like the more like yellowy bits are firmer or they're in chunks. Because it's harder to crush those into a paste. Unless you like blend it. <laughs> I prefer hand crushing though. And you don't have to use the pig thing. <laughs> you can use just a bowl and a fork. That's what I usually do. Uh, and you just... If you need to finish it with the fork, you can. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to have to finish this with the Wipe fork. Wipe it down with the fork. Anyways, I usually That's take good. my fork and I'll go in like this and have like my pointer finger right here. Because it gives... The fork on that bowl. <laughs> it gives maximum strength. I have a lot of finger strength, though, so... 
because of the unsatisfying sound, we're switching back to the this thing. <laughs> it was a bit scratchy. <laughs> Chalkboardish. Nails on chalkboard. <laughs> We're pretty good. See, like you got like a few of those little chunks right in there and stuff, and that's good. This is about the consistency we're going for. Just leave it there because you're gonna mix. I am. Broke uh, down. <laughs> but now, what's next? First, we are gonna be adding salt and pepper. I feel like salt and pepper is one of those things that you always have, and again, it's to taste. You don't have to add too much salt. Like if you go on a low sodium diet type of thing, this is good because you can just hand add it. And so next is pepper. And you don't add too much. There we go. I always take, it always takes me forever to figure these things out. I think I need to refill the pepper. Anyways, then you mix that in. And the reason why I do the salt and the pepper first is, people may not know this, but our next step is going to be adding lemon juice. And so, the salt really brings out the lemon juice. And so, what you don't want it too sour or anything you just want to have that hint of acidity in it and so adding the salt first it acts like a measurement to it it helps you measure how much acidity you want and you don't want too much that was just a few drops oh it came out more <laughs> the the lemon juice stops it from changing too yes it does help with preservation as you've seen in like other videos like in her lemon preservation salt lemon like the acidity in it all these different things helps to preserve it and make it go bad let like not as soon so you can have this for a long long time and also if another way is you can add the avocado pits into it and so right when it's now, done I'm just gonna take a little taste. I feel like I got a little bit more. Not much though. There. And so we are gonna add that a little bit in and mix it around. Secret ingredients. Okay. Technically, this is one of the more main ingredients. Something that gives it much flavor and the best guacamole you ever tasted type of taste is garlic and onion powder. It just adds, like, to me, garlic has a bit of a spicy hint to it anyways. Is that garlic? Yes, this is the garlic powder. And so it adds that little bit of a kick without adding too much, plus you get that nice garlicky flavor. And if you're like me, I love garlic, obsessed with it. And the onion powder kind of balances it out. About equal amounts? Yeah, about equal. I usually add a tad bit more garlic than onion powder because a little bit of onion powder goes a long, long way. Plus, I don't actually add onions or tomatoes to my guacamole like most people do, and so it gives it that slight oniony flavor without having the onions and without having to chop it and cry. <laughs> and if someone's more of an onion fan, they could add more onion or yeah, more garlic. they can add or... more onion powder or more garlic powder. It depends on what you're more of a fan of. I'm going to add a bit more garlic powder. I can taste the onion. See the onion, if you put too much of it, it'll overpower the garlic. And so, you have to get that right balance in order to, for it to, yes, balance it out, but not fully overpower, unless you like onion and you're not a huge fan of garlic. Okay. 
By the way, when I'm tasting this, I'm using all different fingers and I'm wiping it. So, no extra germ. Plus, it's just us eating it. Yeah, that too. It's just family. <laughs> okay, so that is done. This is the extra secret ingredient. Cholula sauce. It is hot sauce. Yes. And, yes, it adds... For me, I don't add too much because I can't handle a lot of heat. And I know my mom can't either. Junior, on the other hand, could probably add, handle a bit more than us. But this adds, like, that tomatoey flavor. It adds a nice little flavor to it while adding a bit of a kick. Kind of like the garlic sauce. The garlic powder. That's about as, how much I add. I know it looks like a lot. <laughs> but... Trust me, it tastes really good in there. And I added it the last time I made it, not telling my mom this. And she didn't even she couldn't even really tell that there was hot sauce in there. Correct. I was surprised when she said Cholula was one of the ingredients tonight that we needed. I was all, huh? <laughs> and of course, the last ingredient is love. you pour your heart and soul into it. And you make it for your family and your friends who you love. Now, time for the taste test. Just get it good about. I did it again. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. You can serve this in the mocha head if you want, or with like ranch and chips, all cute like we did. Or you can just serve it in a plain bowl. Uh. But anyways, guys, I hope you have an amazing night. Please like, subscribe, and comment, and share. Hope you guys have an amazing day.